He was asked which country he most admired and referred to China. There's a level of, of uh, admiration I actually have for China. Um, because their you know, basic dictatorship is allowing them uh, to actually turn their economy around on a dime and say, we need to go green as fast as we need to start you know, investing in solar. I mean, there is a flexibility that I know Stephen Harper must dream about of having a dictatorship that he could do everything he wanted. Uh, that I find quite interesting. Sadly, we are in this crisis because we've seen a, a failure to take this crisis seriously at all levels of government. And now we're seeing indigenous and racialized people look at the double standard that the convoy is being treated as compared to those protesters. And we also have deeply disturbing reports of military and police personnel who've expressed sympathy and support for the convoy. So will the prime minister provide assurances in this house that the police will use the powers given to protect people and not support the occupation? If Canadians are to trust their government, their government needs to trust Canadians. Those are the words of the Prime Minister in 2015. These people, very often misogynistic, racist, women haters, science deniers, the fringe. Same Prime Minister six years later as he fans the flames of an unjustified national emergency. So, Mr. Speaker, when did the Prime Minister lose his way? When did it happen? You right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, Conservative Party members can stand with people who wave swastikas. They can stand with people who wave uh, the Confederate flag. We will choose to stand with Canadians who deserve to be able to get to their jobs, who will be able to get their lives back. These illegal protests need to stop, and they will, Mr. Speaker. I just want to remind the honourable members, including the honourable right honourable Prime Minister, to use words that are not inflammatory in the House, and that's for both sides. The honourable member for Thornhill. To comment on uh, the words and actions of the U.S. President, but we do have Donald Trump now calling for military action against protesters. We saw protesters tear gas yesterday to make way for a presidential photo op. I'd like to ask you what you think about that, and if you don't want to comment, what message do you think you're sending? We all watch in horror, and consternation what's going on in the United States. It is a time uh, to pull people together, but it is a time to listen. It is a time to learn what injustices continue despite progress uh, over years and decades. But it is a time for us as Canadians to recognize that we too have our challenges. La moderación es Justin Trudeau, que se dedica, así vamos, nos bombardean constantemente los medios de comunicación, que se dedica básicamente a decir, no, si usted protesta le congelo las cuentas, le retiro su seguro, incluso también sus criptomonedas. Este es el moderado. Nothing scares me. Nothing. Yes, I doxed the truckers! I did it! It was me! I had to give send go, baby! And I do it again! I do it a hundred times! I did it! I did it! Come at me! What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to me, huh? I hacked Epic Hosting! I hacked Parlor! I hacked Gab! I hacked Truth Social! I hacked Go! Give, send, go! I don't care! I 
I'm, you can literally put my name into the news tab on Google and you can find everything I've done. I am literally in every mainstream media publication for the things that I do. I'm not an unknown actor. I'm literally a famous fucking cyber terrorist. And you think that you can scare me? See, they always default to the pedophile accusations. They always default to that because they have nothing else. I have hunted pedophiles. I have outed pedophile rings online. I have gotten pedophiles arrested, buddy. You have no idea who the hell I am. There isn't proof of shit, you fucking lying little cunt. Die! I'm going to restart this live. Come back.